adding a layer to tile mill. So you've got your project open and then you're going to need to click on the add layer box down here in the lower left. Click on add layer. There are lots of different file types that tile mill can support including CSV, shapefiles, GeoJSON, KML, GeoTIFF, SQLite, and PostGIS. And under the file area, we're going to add in a hypsometric tinting data set, which I got from Natural Earth Data. Um, NaturalEarthData.com is a great place to find data sets if you don't have any yet. And I'm just going to call this data layer or something here. I'm just going to call it tinting. And that's how it's going to be referenced in the code. Now under the class box, you don't have to put anything in here. And the only reason you would use this is if you have several different layers, all the same kind of thing, and you want to style them all the same way. So let's say you have US roads, European roads, and the rest of the world roads. Then you might have them all um, have a, a class called roads and then in the code you can style them all say um, a black color um, width equals one instead of having to reference them three, three different times. So that's what that's used for. We're not going to use it today. And then in the data source area you can put your uh, file area that you want to get your data from. You can also use the browse button. And then SRS is, uh, stands for a spatial reference system. This is basically the projection that your data is in. And you can use auto detect, which works most of the time. I happen to know that my data is in WGS84. And that's because I took a look at the README file that came with the natural earth data that I downloaded. And it told me that the projection was WGS84. We're going to leave the advanced box empty and then click save and style. If you just click save, it's not going to style your data for you and there will be nothing in the code area. You'll have to do that yourself. So it's a little bit easier when you're first starting out to press save and style. And then magically you'll see that it's put my layer in the layer list and it's also referenced it in the code right here with some default styling. And it's also covered up the rest of my data with this greenish color here. And you can see the data layer a lot better if I zoom out. You can see the hypsometric tinting layer that I downloaded right there.